Hello and warm greetings from UN headquarters here in New York. Thank you for joining us on this Facebook Live. This, my name is Ben Dutse Malo from the Department of Public Information. How, how is Guyana these days? Guyana is doing reasonably well and uh, it is, it is uh, an optimistic scenario. You're looking at an optimistic We like scenario. optimism, you know. Uh, many people are probably aware of is the fact that uh, your neighbor, Venezuela, currently has raised a case, uh, a dispute, uh, claiming, I think, two-thirds of the landmass of Guyana uh, in the northern, northern tip of uh, uh, South America. Uh, tell us, what threat does that pose to you as a people? Well, of course, the, the, I don't think that there is another case like this one where one country claims two-thirds of another country. Uh, that is two-thirds of the landmass, but almost all of the maritime space. So Ghana would be the only country without, uh, without maritime space, without an EZ, although it has a, a, a coast. Um, it poses us, therefore, lack of access, the threat of lack of access to uh, the oceans and all that goes with it, ranging from fisheries to, uh, to maritime, the movement of trade and so forth, and also in terms of land, of course, uh, the portion of Guyana that they claim is a portion in which the mineral resources are pretty extensive. There's an area with manganese, bauxite, gold, diamonds, stone, mm. and the like. Mm. So it is um, ex an existential threat to mm. Guyana. People will be wondering, so I know there is a UN angle to this, but the solution, as foreign minister and also vice president of Guyana, if people are concerned to have Venezuela claiming two-thirds of your land and mm -hmm. your sea, All of the sea yes. uh, what are you seeing as the solution? Well, the solution is for Venezuela to respect international treaties. Venezuela signed a treaty in 1897. It's called the Washington Treaty because the U.S. helped uh, to force Britain into signing, defining the borders. Uh, the, in 1899, the borders were defined by an arbitral tribunal. In 1905, they helped to mark the borders. And then in 1962, in the height of the Cold War, uh, and we believe out of greed, they suddenly saw an opportunity to make a noise uh, and to threaten Guyana. Britain then agreed in a treaty, in, a, in an agreement, that, well, we will solve this controversy. It's a controversy that the 1899 award was null and void. And that uh, is a controversy over the status of an award. It's not about whether the border should be here or there. Mm. The 1966 agreement only says these two countries will talk with a view to settling. And if they don't, if they talk and don't settle, mm. we will go to an option on the uh, UN menu of, mm. of uh, the UN, the UN uh, 19, uh, the, the Article 33 of the UN Treaty, okay. saying arbitration, conciliation, and these various forms, if you like, of dispute resolution. We've gone through all of them. In the 51 years, we've gone through all of those measures, uh, except for the International Court of Justice. And since is, then, is that the option you're considering now, taking the case between Guyana and Venezuela to the ICJ? Or Yes, the, the U.S., the, the, the U.N. Secretary General acknowledged in 2015 that this is a legal issue. If it's a legal issue, then the highest international court is the International Court of Justice. Venezuela agreed in 1966 that the matter could be taken there in the event that the other solutions fail. The other solutions have failed, but the SG has suggested that we have just one other year of talks. We had it in, 60, in, 90, in, in 2016, mm. and Venezuela declined to, to embrace the proposals of the SG. Now he asked that we do it again, once more for the last time. So right Until now, that's December where we are. Until December 2017, the UN Secretary General has appointed someone to help mediate between Venezuela and Guyana. Mr. Doug Newlander, mm. who facilitated the peace, peace uh, accord in Colombia, has been tasked with that exercise, and he has been trying to find a way in which the controversy that uh, the, the award of... 1899 is null and void, could be um, advanced to the point of 
an easy resolution. And, and acceptance and, by all parties, including Venezuela. Yes, we would both have to accept it because yeah. we, we have to agree. In the meantime, we hear stories that because of the dire situation in Venezuela, Guyana is having to receive some citizens of Venezuela. Can you tell us about that and what your government is doing to still assist them, even though you are in some, you say, controversy yes. with them? Yes. Uh, what is happening? It is a controversy because Guyana has no claims on Venezuela. The mouth of the Orinoco was given to them in 1899. And if, the con if it were a dispute, then we would challenge their sovereignty over the entire mouth of the Orinoco and, and the north the northeast of it. But what we have seen is a movement of persons from Venezuela to elsewhere. In, in truth, the largest movement is not to Guyana. It is to probably to Brazil, Colombia, Brazil, to a lesser extent Trinidad and Tobago, and in certain uh, border areas between uh, Guyana and Venezuela, that movement, the mouth of uh, the, the Mabaruma and the Waini in these sorts of areas, uh, in Do the you northwest see some of Ghana. in Georgetown, your capital? You, well, I have seen uh, uh, two or three persons have, in the course of the last three months, come to my residence, brought by Guyanese. Um, these were but Venezuelan these citizens, Venezuelan brought citizens to you. young Venezuelans. But it, it is not an influx of any significant quantity at this point in okay. time. But you are so helping we, them. We help as far as is possible, providing that they enter by legal means. We, we don't have legislation as regards refugees, and therefore there are some restrictions. But by and large, we have no problem with the Venezuelan people. The, the indigenous people of Guyana and Venezuela are the same set of people. Mm. Uh, the uh, other residents move across the border, and, mm. and, and so there's a, a good rapport between the people. It's, it's governments that uh, uh, have created these problems, and therefore people will assist wherever they can, and we will encourage them to assist and we will facilitate as far as is possible. I understand you recently met in the Organization of American States uh, conference. When you, some of these problems, the suggestion is that you get the regional leaders to come together to address it. Have you raised the issue with other South American nations, Caribbean nations? What are the other leaders in the region telling you? Uh, because when you have the controversy, as you're calling it. You would want to see what, what, what is Brazil saying? What is uh, CARICOM saying? What are your other friends, brothers, and sister nations saying? Well, let me say first of all that all of the region, all of the region, has called upon the parties to settle this issue peacefully. So that is a, that is a, a regional position. Uh, the region has also, as far as I'm aware, called upon countries in general to respect international treaties. You can't just wake up a morning and decide, well, look, although I'm located in the Caribbean part of South America, I really want to be an Atlantic power. Uh, what would happen if Ghana tomorrow woke up and said, you know something, our destiny is really a Pacific destiny. We are going to take the coast uh, that, that uh, let us say, Chile or, or Peru has, yeah. and, uh, or, or the US. Let us have that coast. So. That is part of the problem that countries recognize. As regards the CARICOM, CARICOM has lent its support to the region. And because Venezuela has also laid claim by way of two uh, decrees that, that they've promulgated, promulgated in 2015, soon after Guyana uh, was uh, able to be informed by Exxon that oil has been found in, in its maritime zone, they have promulgated treaties 1859, 1787, which treaty, which not treaties, decrees say that all of the the maritime space of Guyana is Venezuela's, all of the EZs of many of the countries in the Eastern Caribbean also are Venezuela's. So at least 11 states are affected by, by Venezuela's. One alone from Venezuela. Okay, I hope and Mr. Colombia as well. is able to resolve this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we just want to thank you here from the VIP social media space uh, on the fringes, on the margins of the 72nd UN General Assembly. It's been an honor for me to meet a long-lost Ghanaian brother <laughs> who happens to be the vice president of Guyana in South America. We will pleasure. talk off camera. Come and join us. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Subtítulos y traducción. Mi mapa de Venezuela incluye nuestro Esequibo.